riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. Yeah. This video is sponsored by Custom Covers. Well, here I am, leaving the Florida State Fairgrounds here in Tampa, where the Florida RV Super Show just took place. Actually, it is still taking place. But today we begin the long journey to the West. It is actually my intention to see both of the major RV shows that happen in January in the same week. Crazy, huh? So I'm going to drive all the way to Quartzsite, Arizona over the course of the next few days here. And let's see what we can explore along the way. Well, driving to the west, well, to the north uh, first, and then to the west. I'm on I-75, just south of Ocala, and uh, I've been listening to podcasts, which uh, <clears throat> reminds me if you haven't heard my podcasts for long drives, you should subscribe. And the best way to do that is just go to travelingrobert.com and click on the Living the RV Dream podcast icon. We're passing by Payne's Prairie in Gainesville, here along boring I-75, and I'm getting sleepy. How about some coffee? Well, you know, I usually consume Cuban coffee, which is a variation of an espresso, but today I'm making me an Americano. Let's make it strong. A little more. There. Yes, I really need to be awake. I have a long way ahead of me. I-75 here in Florida, and soon I-10 look more or less all the same. Not the most uh, scenic of roads, but actually, if you're interested, I am going to post the whole drive on cut in a different video. <laughs> well, now I am truly driving to the west. Driving to the west. And if it wasn't cloudy, I would be driving into the sunset. Driving to the west, into the sunset. Greetings everybody from the rest area. Uh, I'm hungry, let's make some dinner. You know, I'm all about eating healthy, you know, at least as natural as possible, but I'm not gonna make a gourmet dinner here at the rest area right now. So what I'm going to do, so this, I don't know if this qualifies as an RV cooking show. I'm gonna make one of these frozen meals uh, from uh, Bluebird. And they're fairly decent. This one is probably the least healthy one of, of, the, the, of the ones that I bought. This is a, it's like a sausage and peppers. It does have a bunch of ingredients and some stuff I can't pronounce, but it's still better than opening a can or, or, or heating up a TV dinner. So this is what I'm going to do. One thing to remember when cooking in the RV, you know, disable your fire alarm because it usually beeps least expected check it out well bon appetit well i am one of those uh, strange people who actually like to drive at night so off we go and i hope i'm not forgetting anything did i close the door yes i did we continue towards tallahassee florida Slight left onto the ramp to I-10 West, then merge onto I-10 West. I continue driving into the dark night. Well, I arrived at this rest area. I'm tired. I don't see any overnight signs, so I guess it is okay to overnight here, and I see another RV there, and there was another RV 
way over there are a bunch of trucks. So you know what? I'm gonna spend the night here. It's at mile marker 162 on I-10. Good morning. Making coffee. Yeah, all the RVs left and now it's all trucks, so I'm gonna leave too, just in case. Well, it is mostly trucks, but there is at least one Winnebago Via here at the parking lot. I'm leaving soon, though. Well, there's uh, the bridge over the Apalachicola River, and on the other side, it is one hour earlier. As the sun begins to rise, I continue on my journey west. Crossing the Apalachicola River into the central time zone. It is always more comfortable to drive with the sun behind you, isn't it? This is Mariana, Florida. For some reason it looks, looks so familiar. Maybe we've been here before in one of our... Maybe. Turn left onto Malloy Plaza, then turn left. Maybe when we went to, um, to Destin, we passed by here, I don't know. I'm gonna stop at the Walmart and, and buy some stuff. Clean that solar panel. Get lots of energy for boom looking. Well, this I-10 going west has like a rest area every 30 to 40 miles. So that's very nice. I'm starting to like this road. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to cheat. I want to put that Alabama map, uh, you know, Alab that Alabama sticker on my map back in Minitini. We're going to do something in Alabama today. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving to the west, into the sunset, driving to the west. Driving hmm, stretch your legs trail, that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> Anyways, uh, there we are, less than an hour away from Alabama. Driving to the west. Mental note, gotta clean that window. Yes, we are still in Florida, but not for long. We are crossing the Pensacola Bay, and the Alabama state line is very, very close. The into the sunset, drive into the west. Do I see a goodbye Florida sign in the distance? Well, no more Florida for a while. Welcome to Alabama. Thank you. We are now in sweet home Alabama. Let's stop at the Welcome Center. Welcome Center. Alabama, welcome center. I got my maps. Very nice lady in there gave me all kinds of informa information. She says that next time I have to camp somewhere in Alabama. So, 
perhaps I will. Let me see if it is safe to take a picture with the Alabama sign. I don't think, I, I th it looks like it is kind of far, but actually I'm just gonna take a selfie with this sign. It's, it's smaller than that one over there, but it's safer. But we're not gonna stay in Alabama this time, but at least I'm going to do something in Alabama so I can put that sticker on my map. There's another rig coming this way. Well, it turns out there is uh, this truck stop called Oasis Travel Center here in Alabama, right off I-10. So we're going to check it out. Well, there I am. Mini Tini. Here we are. Outside they have this uh, railroad car and all this uh, railroad motif. And the diner. Called the derailed diner. Pretty cool. You enter through what looks like a VW bus. Yeah, make love, not war. And in here, in, inside, it is pretty cool. It looks like a pirate ship, you know, where you pay. And uh, it is a nice twist, you know, instead of just making it like an old plain rest stop, you know, they try to be creative. Let's look for the aforementioned uh, derailed diner, which is actually where I want to eat. Yeah, this place is huge. Well, here we are. In the derailed diner. The kitchen is behind this school bus. Cool to have a, have a saddle there. I have the roast turkey special. Not great, but it was okay. Cool. I like all the eclectic decorations in here, you know, everywhere. Well, now I've had lunch in Alabama at a somewhat quirky place, so I think that qualifies me to have a sticker in my map, don't you think? If I can ever find the stickers, it's been so long I forgot what I put them. There's Mini Tini, looking more mini than ever. Let's continue towards Mobile, but before we get too far, let me tell you about our sponsor Custom Covers for your RV, made out of steel and available in many different colors, in 29 states, with a 2-4 to four week lead time, so protect your RV from the elements by calling Lisa at 501-455-4442, and if you mention me, you get a discount, how cool is that? Anyways, where were we? Oh yeah, I remember this long bridge here as we approach Mobile, you know, from that time, way back in 1996 when I drove with some friends uh, all the way from Miami to New Orleans for Mardi Gras. Yeah, it's been a while. Mississippi very soon, so keep your eyes peeled. Well, here we are at the Mississippi Welcome Center. I think they have coffee. It's a very cool looking building here, the visitor center. And she says that they just built it, you know, to resemble something. They have a cardboard cut out of Elvis here. He talks to you. Well, Tupelo, Mississippi uh, was the birthplace of Elvis. He doesn't want to talk now. He doesn't want to talk now. Anyways. <laughs> I guess it is uh, made out uh, to look like an antebellum plantation. Hmm. Mardi Gras is coming soon. It's like this, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it doesn't talk loud enough. Boom, and they have coffee, free coffee. Well, I would love to check out Biloxi and all the beaches, but I guess that will have to be on the way back because we are in Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. I know it is kind of risky, but I have to take a picture with a big sign, you know, to add it to the intro. Hmm, they have a dump station. And here we are at the Louisiana Welcome Center. This one also seems to have a Theme. Let's walk inside, see if they have any maps. Cool. Good coffee here at the Louisiana uh, Welcome Center, or Tourist Information Center, like they call it. Around here, I'm going to divert to I-12, which uh, bypasses New Orleans, uh, north of Lake Pontchartrain. It is, for the most part, an uneventful drive, which in this case is a nice way to say boring. As I am here on I-12 on the way to Baton Rouge, about three hours behind schedule, but I'm gonna fix that tomorrow. Uh, I realize this is the furthest west Minitina the trailer has ever gone. We are further west than Memphis, Tennessee. Driving clear across the great state of Louisiana. Here we are, Baton Rouge, Louisiana's capital city. Let's uh, try to find parking, you know, stretch our legs, explore a little bit. Meanwhile, enjoy my friend Chuchi performing my New Orleans theme. Yes, this is just Perfect. Not a bad parking spot, if I may say so myself. I wonder if they would let me boondock here. We are right next to the state capital. Well, here we are. Baton Rouge. And this is uh, the Louisiana state capital. I, I was really hoping to, to arrive here earlier, maybe take the tour, but it probably won't be possible. I mean, the downtown is pretty deserted on this uh, Sunday afternoon. I'm just gonna walk to the building. Okay, let me know if you see Minitini. Okay, I'll give you a hint. There it is. It is Huey Pierce Long. Also known as the Kingfish, he was Louisiana's 40th governor, assassinated in 1935. It's okay. It's a small downtown, but it, says it seems to be a very clean city. It's under construction, so in a way, it is good that I wasn't able to, to come earlier. Ooh, I see. Although it is kind of late, so it might be closed at this time. Let's see. Well, yeah, as I suspected, it, it is already closed. So, um, let's just walk around this nice park. buildings they look like government buildings the downtown area is pretty deserted or at least around here on a Sunday uh, but it doesn't feel scary you know like other downtowns late in the day 
It is extremely clean and no homelessness. Just a few locals taking pictures or exercising. Here we have the St. Joseph Cathedral, a Roman Catholic church. Well, I'm sure there's a lot more to see here in Baton Rouge. But guys, I'm tired. It's, the sun is setting and uh, I'm just gonna find a Walmart or, or somewhere to spend the night and tomorrow, Texas. For the first time in Texas. Y'all. Well, as night falls here in uh, Baton Rouge, it's time to hit the road again. I do wonder if they would let me overnight here. I mean, I don't see any signs saying yes or no for that matter. Well, I'll leave just in case. Before I go, I am going to drive around to this other area by the Mississippi River. I really should have walked all the way, but it is getting dark. Here, at the courthouse, we turn right onto North Boulevard. There's uh, the old state capitol, which actually looks like a castle, and nowadays it is a museum. This National Historical Landmark was the state capital since the mid-1800s until the new building was finished, around 1932, and it was even a prison during the Civil War. And the architecture is pretty unique, as you can see, often called uh, the Grey Old Castle. So, next time I come to Baton Rouge, with more time of course, I am definitely visiting the museum. Right now, however, we are going to cross the mighty Mississippi River, continuing our relentless trek west. darkness falls, I cross the Atchafalaya Basin, the largest wetland and swamp in the United States. Uh, maybe we'll get to see it in a couple of days on the way back. Exhausted, I arrive by Bra Bridge, uh, just east of Lafayette. And uh, there is a casino at the pilot truck stop. Well, I park at the Walmart, my luxury accommodation for the night. Let's cook something. I am starving. Well, today we're going to make a very uh, popular Cuban dish. It is called a picadillo. Well, I'm not going to go into the whole process in detail right now. Uh, suffice to say, garlic and onions uh, and bell peppers are involved. And I will, at some point, uh, make a more detailed RV cooking show video about this. Gotta peel some potatoes, and the potato peeler I've got here in the RV really sucks. I gotta get a new one. Saute the onions and the, the garlic. Add the bell pepper. And might as well cut and add the potatoes too, because I am making this picadillo for the first time here as a one-pot meal. I've had to modify the recipe a little bit, you know, to cook it in the RV. We're gonna add some Vino Seco Golden Cooking Wine from Publix, and our ground beef, and then, you know, move it around. Paprika, oregano, cumin, a little bit of tomato sauce. Let's take out some manzanilla olives and uh, some raisins and uh, some sweet peas. Ah, what the heck, let's use the rest of the tomato sauce. You see? Look at that. It's like, it's like, a, it's like a chili without beans, right? But with potatoes. Since the potatoes are normally cooked uh, separately, I am going to cover it and let it simmer for a few minutes until the potatoes get soft. Okay, so that's more or less what it's supposed to look like, but I kind of um, underestimated the amount of time that, is, that it was going to take for the potatoes to, 
to fully cook, so they're still, they, they still could use a couple of more minutes. But. Well, we're going to pair this with some California Cabernet Sauvignon and mmm, bon appetit! Well, we woke up to some thunderstorms here in uh, Lafayette. So, I'm gonna wait a little bit. I'm already so behind schedule anyways. Well, good morning. I'm here at the Walmart just east of Lafayette, Indiana. Indiana, Louisiana. <laughs> and uh, two more RVs there. And um, there's a big thunderstorm coming, so I think I'm gonna ride it out here and then leave. Okay, so while I ride out the storm here, I'm doing some power management down here. And uh, I divided my power strips into essentials and non-essentials. This is the external hard drive. I don't want that to, to go off at any time. And then my, my audio interface and the computer. And here are all the chargers. Chargers are non-essential, so I could just turn this off if uh, my battery is uh, low, which it actually is. Why not? We are in Louisiana and the pilot has a casino. Well, let's depart towards better weather. Well, made it to Texas, y'all, for the first time. In the next video, we'll drive across the Lone Star State and maybe see some things along the way. If you have enjoyed traveling with us, and make sure you are subscribed and check out my other videos. Also, share it with your friends, spread the word and leave me a comment. Now, if you really, really liked it, you have a chance to show your support at patreon.com slash travelingrobert. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.